In today's video, I'll be showing you all the parts and pieces you'll likely need for your next arcade one-up cocktail cabinet mod. So stay tuned because I'll be showing you some tips and tricks I learned along the way. Coming up right after this. Alright, so let's go over a brief overview of all the parts and pieces I used to complete the basic introductory version of the mods I'm doing thus far. First and foremost, I added the furniture legs that I mentioned previously in my review video of this cabinet. This raises the cabinet four and a half inches and brings it up to about almost 30 inches from the floor to the top of the play field on top of the table here. After that, I went ahead and started working on the buttons and the joysticks. So for the main action buttons, I went with HAP competition buttons and D44X Cherry Micro Switches. They're just my personal favorite button of choice and the micro switches in my opinion are just ideal because they're a little more quieter. But completely personal preference, you don't have to do this. You can actually use the stock buttons again if you want to. You'll notice up here, I'm reusing the stock button for the player one as well as a select button. So up top here, I actually added two buttons. This is where the on and off switch and the volume rocker was. I removed those. This was just a leftover hat button that I had from a different project I've got here. And again, this is a reused version from the actual arcade one up buttons. So the two white buttons that were here are now here and here, but these don't matter. This is just going to be my start and my coin buttons. So I didn't really care what those look like or cherry switches or anything like that. They still have the same two pin plug in. So it was very easy to connect them. So this button right here is going to operate as my back button in my menu screens. But other than that, everything else is pretty straightforward. I'm not reusing the plexiglass overlay. I will be reskinning this panel with a much more durable vinyl overlay, so I don't really care all the chip scratches or anything that's gonna happen to it because it's gonna go bye-bye in the very near future for the next upgrade mod tutorial video. Next, I had the HAP competition joysticks. Again, this is personal preference. You don't have to do this. This is just my personal favorite joystick of all time is the HAP competition joystick. If you are going to add the HAP competition joystick to these control decks on these cocktail cabinets, be forewarned, there is quite a bit of extensive dremeling required. Um, basically, you've got to dremel away almost close to 95% of this container, this plastic container tray that goes on the bottom of the control deck. With most arcade one-up cabinets, we would just get rid of this and you don't have to worry about it. But since this one actually is utilized in the cabinet's construction, so it actually comes in and sits inside two slots here on the side panels, as well as it is connected and protected on the bottom. So what I had to do is cut away almost every single portion, except for this small lip that's still showing on the outside, as well as this front panel that is still showing in order to make room for the buttons and the joystick. So if you're going with long stem buttons, again, you'll also have to do some dremeling to this plastic tray. If you're going with short, smaller stem buttons, like what is stock from Arcade 1UP, while they're not the, the best buttons in general, these short stem buttons are actually gonna fit much easier and require less extensive modifications. So if you don't wanna do any dremeling cutting of this plastic tray, find yourself some short stem buttons as opposed to the long stem buttons. And not only did I have to dremel away a lot of this plastic tray, I actually had to dremel a small notch on both sides of the control decks underneath on this bottom board so the joystick actually had plenty of room to move around and it wasn't hitting at the bottom of the base. To convert the stock arcade one-up monitor in this cocktail cabinet to receive something like an HDMI or a VGA input, you simply need to purchase this particular LCD controller board that works for these cocktail cabinet monitors. Simply remove the stock Arcade 1UP PCB board from the back of the monitor and its LVDS connections, and then you'll need to reconnect the monitor LVDS cable to the new LCD controller board as shown, paying particular attention to where the white dot on the cable is facing. Then connect the ground wire to the LCD controller board. 
You can mount this anywhere, but the stock LVDS cable length is quite short, so you may likely need to mount this on the back of the monitor. But make sure you put something out of a barrier in between the LCD controller board and the metal monitor housing first. I rigged mine up temporarily with some 3M double-sided tape and cardboard, as I will be changing out the monitor for a larger one during a later date. So inside the machine, I'm running a Dell OptiFlex 9020 small form factor PC. It, this specific one that I have in here is much more than I absolutely need. It's overkill. It's got an i7 processor. You can get away with an i5 processor and run almost any game you could potentially want to throw at this thing. But I've got it loaded with big box. It's running on a Windows 10 platform. It loads directly into big box as soon as I start it up. So I don't have to do anything like that. Navigation, I've just thrown on a bunch of the ROMs I had sitting around. It's got it pre-organized by publisher and platform, those kind of things. Got all my box art. For my audio, I actually reused the stock speakers and connected them to the PC with a USB audio connector. The TRRS connection that the speaker ends come with from the factory, well, they don't pick up on the PC otherwise, so I had to utilize this USB audio connector adapter to plug into the USB port, and now I got sound coming out of my speakers. And the last little bit I highly recommend is using a wireless USB keyboard. I've got the USB dongle plugged into the back of the PC, but this helps me navigate menus, open up options, and things like that. But specifically, you'll see why this is so important when operating MAME on this. So we'll go ahead and launch Alien vs Predator, and you'll see that it's going to open with a bezel art, and it's going to look not ideal for our display. So we've got a 17 inch display here, but we're only seeing a little bit of the play field. I'm going to hit tab. It's going to open my input options. I'm going to come down to video options. And now I've got various options. I can change it to standard 4.3, getting a little more of my viewing aspect ratio. I can do 12.7, which definitely not ideal in this situation. Or if I want that head-to-head -head look for my cocktail cabinet, I will hit cocktail mode. And then now I've got mirrored display for both player one and player two. Enter a couple of coins, and then now you can see both player one and player two have equally mirrored displays. This works great on all the games I have loaded on here, literally hundreds and hundreds of games, well more than the 12 that included on here, and some that might surprise you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go through some gameplay and show you how cool this is. So full disclosure, I know a lot of people are gonna ask, can you do this on a Raspberry Pi? Technically, yes, you can do this on a Raspberry Pi, but the thing is, you need to have some of the newer advanced versions of MAME running to have this cocktail slash mirror display mode available to you. A lot of the older versions of MAME do not have that capability, and I know a lot of the pre-made Pi images out there utilize those older versions of MAME. So if you're one of those people that's used to just being able to go download pre-made Pi images and you're expecting to go ahead and do this, well, your mileage may vary because not all those versions are gonna have that cocktail mirror mode, but it is possible, you just may have to do a little extra legwork. So for here, let's go ahead and just randomly test a couple of games. Go to Midway Classics. Everybody loves NFL Blitz. And one of the great things about this is it saves all your settings. I don't have to do this each and every time I go into the screen. I played this game before, so it'll open up in cocktail mode, ideally. Yep opens up in cocktail mode already. But again, if I wanted to change it, I would just hit tab on my keyboard, go down to my video options. Like I said, I could change it to standard 4.3 if I want to. Every game has a little bit different options as far as the different aspect ratios. So you can play with whatever you like, but if for whatever reason you wanted to flip the screen, you could go to rotate. Now you would have a screen facing that way. You could rotate it any direction you want but we'll go back to cocktail mode. Go be my Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl champions. But hopefully you can see the appeal, being able to sit across from one of your friends and talk smack, look at them directly in the eye. This is another reason I prefer PCs over Pies. These Opuflex PCs are readily available. 
You can get them for anywhere from $100 to $150. They're very cheap, very easy to find. Businesses are selling them all the time and getting rid of them as they upgrade. And to back out, I'll just hit my black back button that I've installed. Navigating my menu with the joysticks. Again, I can run any type of games I potentially want to throw at this. So I'll show you what a vertical game looks like. As you can see, it's filling up the entire screen, so that's ideal. That's how we want it. For whatever reason, we want to tinker with it again. Video options, standard 4.3, we already are. 7.9, cocktail, debug mode. But we're going to go standard. Play some Miss Pac-Man. some different games we'll go yeah show you some other more advanced options that i think are interesting die hard arcade again something you would never expect to be able to play head to head but you can Works great. And if any time a friend wanted to join on, they would simply hit the button. And now I've got the second player in the game as well. And they've got their own dedicated play field. Everything looks great, works great. Go some more advanced shoot 'em ups. Games from 2006. So see, opens up vertical, but we've got bezels and art and everything, and we're not filling up the whole screen. So we'll just simply come hit tab, go to our video options, switch to our aspect ratio, standard 3-4. We could go cocktail and go 50-50 if we had a friend playing, but since we're playing solo, we'll just do standard. These newer shmups are just absolutely ridiculous. Um, Especially the Japanese ones that are not in English. You just kind of have to <laughs> guesstimate what the story is about, but all you really need to know is shoot the things on the screen before they shoot you. Another one of the perks of using a PC over a Raspberry Pi or something like that is the fact that I'm able to use different platforms such as Steam so I can go and find some of my games that are actually set up to allow for a vertical orientation gameplay. So I can do something like, oh, let's say Pac-Man 256. You can see it fills up the entire screen. Use my controls. Using the joystick to move. Underneath the tabletop itself and inside the cabinet sits the PC, and it is a bit of a rat's nest, I will fully admit. I have yet to do any wire management or anything like that. That's because I'm still working on future modifications, so everything inside of it right now is a temporary setup, so I didn't want to permanently affix everything, just to have to take it apart one more time. But at the bottom of the base, you'll notice I had to drill a couple holes. This is to allow the power out for both the PC as well as the monitor to get out. And I've just got those plugged into a simple power strip that is adhered to the base of the cocktail cabinet. All I have to do is hit the toggle switch on and off, powers everything on and off with a simple flick of the switch. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Very simple, very cheap, very effective way to manage all the power and cables and connectivity. That does it for today's video. I just want to give you guys a brief little overview and showcase some of the things you'll need if you're going to go down that route of modding your arcade one-up cocktail cabinets. And again, this does apply for the Pac-Man, the Street Fighter, both Black Series and regular retail versions of these cabinets, so don't worry about that. 
Now, keep in mind, you don't have to use the same parts and pieces on this cocktail cabinet mod that I used. In fact, I'll put some suggested alternatives down in the video description box below. But, hope you guys enjoyed this content. Make sure you stick around to the channel because I'll be posting an update to this video where I do a little more advanced modding, update some new graphics with the arcade cabinet, as well as throw in a new monitor to this cocktail cabinet. And maybe a sneaky surprise along the way. Stay tuned, hope you subscribe to the channel, and as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.